What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC podcast. You guys are hanging with the Dudes in Blue, episode number 94. Hope you guys are doing well this Monday evening. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me, as always... I've changed my name. I made it soccer-related. Antonino. <laughs> Antonino. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up? What's going on, dude? Uh, Monday night. Just uh, looking forward to getting the show going here. People starting to roll in. Uh, as you guys are starting to roll in, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, let us know. Right off the bat, we say hi to Paul and Daniel. These two guys, they're pretty much dudes in blue faithful just about every week, right? We see Paul and uh, and we see Daniel. What's going on, guys? Roddy Russell joins us as well. Oh, Roddy's back. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've already got the uh, the comments rolling through. Uh, guys, we're, 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 we're going to talk about the, uh, the St. Paddy's Day matchup between NYCFC and Orlando for sure. Uh, we want to take your comments. We want, we want your input. And, uh, as you guys are joining, let us know where you're coming from. Smash that like button. Let us know what you think. And, uh, as we get rolling here, uh, dude, so, oh, before that, guys, if you haven't already, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Dudes in Blue, you know where to follow us. It's pretty simple, right? Yep. So, dude. Uh, are you, are you recuperated from the, the cold? Yeah. You know what it is? It, the temperature is really not terrible. I mean, I've sat in, in colder it, where we are. The wind is actually not forgiving. And Whipping. after, after, you know, 45, 50 minutes sitting there, if you don't move, it really starts to get to you. And then when you get back in the car, you actually feel it because you can still feel your skin tingling. Uh, not, <laughs> I brought hand warmers. I had hand, warm, warm, hand warmers in the pocket, like just, just trying to stay on. warm, you know? I had gloves. I'm going to bring keeper gloves next time just to keep me warmer. That's, that's right. Hey, just a couple of uh, hellos. We got John Levin saying, hey. We got Jason Pena, sup dudes, Rod Sarvis. What's going on, my friend? Uh, we got Jorge coming in from New Jersey. We got uh, Coco saying, yo. And uh, Andres is watching from South Carolina. What up, Andres? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so, yes, right off the bat, we are undefeated, 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 says Jorge. And uh, yo, 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 back at it again. Three points feeling good from Ari Herrera. Dude, John Levin's getting a little bit uh, a little bit ahead of himself, I think, saying we're going to go 34-0. and But I'll take the first three wins. What do you think? Uh, listen, anything with the O at the end of it's good. So if we can keep that going, it's so important early on in the season to establish some sort of a lead because it gives you a little more wiggle room in the middle of the season when you do hit those slumps where you're you taking a loss or two ties or you know two losses back to back, it won't kill you. It's when you start, you know, if you're stuttering throughout the whole season, then one loss can really change, you know, everything around dramatically. So the more wins we can pile up in the beginning just makes it that much less stressful towards the end of the year when we really need to figure out what's going on. Just, dude, an interesting point about this. I looked at the schedule, and I don't remember the exact number, but it's pretty high. Nine, nine or so out of our first 13 matches are against Western Conference teams. So a lot of opportunity, dude, to grab those points from the West early on. That's going to be huge yeah. later on in the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. So uh, right off the bat, John is saying, uh, can we just acknowledge that we're nine points ahead of Toronto FC? Um, they have yet to score a goal in uh, <laughs> in the season. But don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them because when they click, they will be deadly just as always. And uh, we got to make sure that we are ready for them for sure. So, um, dude, let's uh, let's start with the lineup because there was a couple of a few surprises, literally, right yeah, before the game started. No David Villa, no Anton Tinnerholm, and Joe Ing Brigette all out on injury. Kind of a surprise. Uh, so we had some some guys had had to step up. Um, what do you think about the the David Villa injury number one, and uh, and let, let's might as well start off with Tajori taking his spot. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, but again, we saw him uh, towards the end of the game icing his calf. 
So it turns out to be a, a low-grade calf strain, which is uh, nothing too serious. But again, this early in the year when it's cold, everything's tight, It's uh, it makes it a little more difficult. So to err on the side of caution is always okay with me. I'm fine with it. I'd rather him sit out now and, and regain full health and be ready to go when it gets warmer rather than, you know, making it much worse. Um, so that for me is okay. Again, surprising because we didn't hear anything about it on the injury report the day before the game. So that yeah, one was like 15 minutes. Before, yeah, like, really. Before and they announced the lineup. Uh, I guess Joe Ingberget was cleared to play and ended up coming down with the flu which is why he couldn't play, which is, okay, understandable, not a problem. Uh, you don't want to spread that around anywhere. So uh, Tinner home for me, I guess, was the bigger one because that slide tackle he he took last week proved to be the one that actually it really actually hurt him. Um, he's got a, a ankle sprain, so – We'll we'll see what happens there, but um, which, we which have means really for him, things. dude, for him to, to to play through the rest of that match. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. Uh, you got some stones, got some stones. Yeah, I mean, because we we didn't really know how serious that that injury was because he was in the locker room immediately after. Usually, if the guys get hurt during the game, they're 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 taken out uh, on a golf cart throughout the tunnels and to get treated. But he was there. He was doing interviews. He was ready to roll, and and apparently it's. Uh, it's keeping him from playing, so he was he was certainly missed. But let's um, let's let's start off with the conversation about uh, about Izzy Tajori, and I want you guys to start commenting. Let us know what you thought of Tajori's performance. We're going to talk a little bit about him. Um, you know, dude, I, all match, the dude had one shot total. I feel yeah. like he was kind of thrown into that situation, and he really didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, he did not look comfortable. Um, that was my main thing. I think communication-wise, I don't think he was prepared. Uh, anytime he touched the ball in the first half, all you saw was this from him. Yeah, yeah. And we're sitting right there, and it's clear as day that he's just not – you can't always do that because you give away people's positioning, obviously, and you're telling defense where to go. But if you're if you're wasting time trying to figure out who's where, um, that, that there's – no chemistry there. You really have to work on that. And if he's going to play up there, he really, really needs to train and work with those guys up front and make sure that they're all on the same page because they were not. Yeah, at, yeah. On the same page. Um, Ari is asking, are we going with Izzy or Ish? Uh, I like Izzy personally, but uh, is, is he to jury? Is he not to jury? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, we. <laughs> no matter what, he sounds like a sauce. Tajuri sauce. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For me, his play overall, I know he got the goal. But, again, from someone who's playing forward, you, you want to see a little more confidence. And maybe the goal gives it to him. Um, maybe it does. He, it he was could just be a cool. chemistry thing, dude. I mean, like, because, yeah. again, it's really the first time he's really had that kind of opportunity to, to show it off. Um, Roddy Russell is saying Tajuri with a goal, Salam with a secondary assist. We'll get to him. Um, still a little early. It looks like the scouting department has solved the depth issue. I think it's you know I mean, look, we've we've had to go to our depth in the first couple of matches of the season, and they've proved to to pick up the points for us. So in that regard, yes. In the micro, in the in the 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 small you know minutia, there's still some tweaks that need to be made, and there's still some comfort that needs to that needs to that needs to grow. And that's just gonna that's just gonna come with time. Well, here's the best part about that: you're winning games and still having the ability to need the tweaks and the working together and the gelling. Yeah. If you could win games while doing that, it's incredible yeah, you're because dangerous. you're unstoppable. Yeah, you're uh, dangerous. Just imagine what you can do when it's all figured out. I mean, you're already winning two nil. You're already uh, for me the the biggest thing that's been uh, our solid rock is our defense. Our defense has been by far even better than last season. And last season they were really, really good. Yeah. This season they are absolutely solid, and it gives it gives everybody else a boost, and it's a little more forgiving, I think. I think when your defense can bail you out a couple times, I think it gives you a little more creative freedom with the ball. I think you could do a little bit more. Uh, you, you could be a little more risky with it, and you know you could you could put some goals in that way. So. For me, I'm loving the defense. I think and the guys that are stepping up, uh, that are filling in, are doing a tremendous job. And it's nice to know that it doesn't matter who, who you call on, they're going to get the job done. Yeah, yeah. Just um, just to get to a couple comments here. Um, 
referring to, I believe, to Jory. I thought his composure in front of the net was good. I don't know if I got that. I don't know if he had enough. I don't know if he put himself in enough opportunities to show composure. He I saw him go. The goal saw... was the goal was composed. The goal was fine. I'm I'm totally good, calm. Found himself space and buried the shot. That's awesome. It's the other stuff that needs to happen because he's playing on the wings. And with this free form offense that we have going, where everybody can switch positions at any time that they feel like it. If you're going to find yourself in the middle, you've got to be composed. But if you're going to be on the wings, you really need to know what's going on with everybody else. And for me, his wing play is is not there just yet whether it's communication or just, you know, first touches because it's early in the season, whatever it may be, that needs to improve. But the finishing and and the composure in the middle of the box is totally fine with me. Um, he showed you he could do it. And that, I mean, just for me, he just needs to work a little bit more. And it's nothing, not a knock against him. You know, a lot of people need work. It's just for me, the first half was so uncomfortable watching him play because he just wasn't comfortable. I think, dude, the, fir- the first half as a whole was just not a comfortable half to watch. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. Um, there was just a lot of stop and start. I feel like no team could kind of get into the groove, neither right. NYC or Orlando. I think, you know, you got you to gotta think. Orlando gets there late, right? Uh, so, they're, you know, they didn't even walk out of the tunnel. They were, auto- they were already, like, on the field ready to go. They right. just lined yeah. up, right? So they literally got there late, and NYCFC has some last-minute lineup changes that can completely throw off the chemistry, which we saw that in the first half. That being said, we still dominated, and in the second half, that kind of all turned around, right? So yeah, I think, I think, dude, let's um, let's let's get into the goals a little bit. the The first goal was a complete gift, right? Yeah. Bad ball. Uh, Hutun plays a bad ball back to Joe Bendik, who can't clear it, puts it right on Tajuri's foot. If Tajuri does not finish that, there's there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, those are the ones where you, you have to do something with them. They're they're sitters. You got to put them in. You got to find a way to, to to do it. Whether it's a pass, someone who's open because someone's going to be wide open. But for me, the the main person on that play that did the most work, who didn't touch the ball, was Rodney Wallace. He put that. He put that run on, ran right at Bendik and crossed in front of him, and that was the pressure that Bendik felt to get rid of the ball. Sure. Again, it was a terrible ball back to him. I mean, you don't want to bounce it back to your keeper like that because he can't hand it. He can't use his hands, so he's got to get rid of it. And in that instance, when you got pressure and you have to kick a ball that's in midair, uh, it's just a recipe for disaster. And luckily for us, we had the composure and the ability to finish, uh, being in the right place at the right time. But for me, Rodney Wallace, aside from – him being all over the place again and he's doing a lot of things without the ball that are good but i you need somebody in that position to do more and get on the score sheet and get on the stat sheet and he did he had a better game he had the header off the crossbar early on um but for me he really started that whole thing with his run at bendick yeah and that kind of answers rod's question thoughts on rodney wallace's play saturday i think wallace was probably better off the ball than he was on the ball uh, yeah. in, in some instances in that match. So, I, you know, we've, we've kind of been down on Wallace lately. Um, this was probably one of his better performances, I would have to say, just because of, yeah. you know, what, what we were given there. Uh, so um, uh, Mark Mark is asking, are we officially a 4-2-3-1 or still a 4-3-3? I think we're still a 4-3-3. I think Alex Ring is pretty much hol- in, the, in that holding spot. Uh, Maxi and Herrera kind of have the freedom to go wherever they want, although so does Alex Ring. Alex Ring seems to, seems to find himself wherever the hell he needs to find himself, right? He and he answers to no one. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but, yeah, it's just uh, – yeah, I, I, I still think we're a 4-3-3 based on just what we've seen. I think we're a 4-3-3. It's just that we're we are There's a very movement. much – It's a free form because right. – You've got guys switching left and right, and, and for me, it's it, it works. It works for now. It's just that you've got to make sure that everybody's on the same page when you do switch because, you know, you're focusing on who's playing in front of you, and if you're, you're constantly changing, doing it too often is probably not a good idea, but doing it a couple times a game where you, you give the defense different looks, it could definitely be in your favor, and it well, it is in ours. I mean, we, we've we've shown it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, John is asking, can we stop and talk about King Ring? The guy is just amazing. I mean, yeah, dude, I, I don't 
This animal. Absolute animal. Can you read his stat line? You read me his stat line before, and I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, the dude, I mean, he had a hundred, uh, he had 105 touches in the match, and if I'm looking at it, the dude had 10 interceptions, four clearances, and three tackles. He's rated an 8. Uh, 8.2 on who scored. The dude is just a beast. If, if he continues to play like this and never even sniffs out a goal, I am all for it. Sure, sure. Listen, that's not his job. That's not his job. But, again, those 10 interceptions, you know, those clearances, those subtract goals. Those most definitely right. will subtract goals. Yep. And that is that is just as big as putting one in the net. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it's looking like we're not going to have Alex Ring Saturday, right, because he got called up to the uh, – uh, the national team there. Paul is saying Ring is greater than Bradley. Well, it doesn't take much to be greater than Bradley these days. But um, <laughs> uh, Victor is saying, hey, Victor, uh, welcome to the show. Matarita will qualify for the next Paralympics and rep the, the boys in blue. I really <laughs> feel bad for Matarita. The dude played 10 minutes and uh, immediately coming off for, for injury. That's that's not going to well, be good. Speaking of our defensive back line. So here's the issue there. Um, I don't know if anybody else caught this, and if you did, please chime in and let us know that, that you did. But at half, when the second half was starting and the players were walking back to the bench areas, he was limping. Whether he was doing it on purpose or was really laboring, he was by far and away limping across the middle of the field. He was in the center circle, and he was absolutely limping. It looked like he was exaggerating a little bit, um, looking like a little old man walk, a little old man shuffle he had going on. But if that was indeed real, you've got to think about going in there and playing. I mean, you're already, you've already had injury troubles. If if you're really limping, really, are you really going to risk it? I mean, look what happens. You've got you've probably he's got a serious uh, hamstring injury now. His leg was all wrapped up afterwards. Uh, he's saying it's a bad injury. If you're limping in between halves, you really shouldn't be playing. I understand people want to you know you want to put your pride up there and you you want to go out there and show what you got because your spot's pretty much been taken over by Ben Sweat, who we'll talk about in a little bit. Yep. But um, you you're not going to earn it back that way because you're going to end up on the bench hurt. Yeah, exactly. Guys, start, oh, start, me, throwing up, was... start throwing up your comments about Ben Sweat. We want to know about what you think about him uh, him on Saturday and just in general. I think – so the moderate injury, while it could be serious, I don't think it necessarily hurts us because Ben Sweat is just an absolute monster at left back. I, I This dude is stepping up and improving game after game after game. His touch is great. His footwork is great. He can whip a ball in, and he gets back on defense. He's everything you want in a fullback, which is making our wing play very dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. Agree 100%. And the fact that Moderita doesn't come in for Ben Sweat, it just means he's more expendable at very that point. Very good point, point. yeah. Um, because they're not, they're, not, they're not changing one for one. They're not swapping one for one. Moderita's coming in to be a little more defensive or to play on the wings. He's not taking Ben Sweat's, Ben Sweat's spot. So for me, if you do miss him, it's not the end of the world. Although you do feel bad for him, you want to see him out there because he does bring a lot to the field. It's just that it's not really super detrimental at this point in time because he hasn't really had the minutes. Yeah. But for me, Ben Sweat, the ability, the ability to create when there's no space where he can put a little move on and get himself some room and get the ball upfield and do it accurately and get his crosses in. And play up. And you're right, to get back and be able to play solid defense, not just to get back and foul like R.J. Allen did, to get, to get back and play solid defense is absolutely amazing. And I 100% think he should be getting looks from the U.S. men's national team. Well, here's uh, here's some comments, dude. Here's some comments rolling in about Ben Sweat. Uh, Rod is saying that Ben Sweat uh, forced Moderita's hand 100%. Um, we got a couple guys, Jorge and, uh, and Steven, calling him Sweatinho. Which I, I kind of like. I kind of like. Uh, Mark is saying, yet he's still only a 66 in FIFA. I don't think that's going to change. He's an MLS player. Uh, if no Sweat, love. And then Paul is saying, if Sweat keeps consistent, he should be a caller for the U.S. national team. Listen, if Tommy, McNamara, if Tommy McNamara can get a look and get invited to camp, 
Absolutely. Ben Sweat automatically needs to get a shot at a That's play. not to discount Tommy McNamara, but not at all. you're talking, not at you're all. talking it's, similar lines here. You do two, you're, you're talking about two people who do totally different things on the field, but when you look at what Ben Sweat can bring, yep. he absolutely deserves a shot. Yep. No question in my mind. Well, here's the thing, dude. We got uh, four or five years before uh, you know for them to try to figure that out. So, so there's that. Um, it's a great story, though. It's a great story from being cut in Columbus to you know going down to coming back up and just look at what he's been able to do here. I mean, he's just all around solid. Uh, anybody would be lucky to have him. And really. just a shout out to John Sweat on Twitter who followed us recently. Come to find out, it's Ben Sweat's dad that follows us on Twitter, which is awesome. So go. shout out to the Sweat family. Anyway, the sweaty family. Uh, anyway, dude, not to not to keep bouncing around because you know all these comments coming through, it makes us bounce around. But that's okay because we're le- we're letting the fans kind of dictate the conversation here because the game again, the game wasn't totally totally amazing, but um, there's some certain things that we can pull out here, uh, dude. The second goal, which again, uh, a goal that came from a turnover by none other than Sasha Kleshian, the pirate of the Caribbean. He, uh, <laughs> that's his real job, actually. That's, I know, right? He just works at the rides at Disney World now. That's why he wanted to go down to Orlando. Um, bad turnover. Uh, Saad Abdul Salam takes the ball, runs it up the wing, cuts it inside to Medina, who plays a beautiful little touch off to Maxi Morales to bury the second goal. Now, that goal uh, would have been enough to win the game uh, if that if that goal had come first, right? But you're talking about a really really nice team goal when you when you seize an opportunity and you just become ruthless and you destroy and dismantle a team that positioning on that play not only because it came off a turnover and you got the defense involved which was fantastic the positioning wise where you had maxi in the middle up top you had medina on the side getting in there um just knowing what's going on there uh medina didn't even look he knew Maxi was behind him. Dude, the communication is there. The one touch was there. It was beautiful. And Medina had a couple plays like that. He was very solid. And if he can do that the, the entire season, you're going to see goals from him. You're going to see goals from Maxi. And these are going to be the two guys that are going to really bring it up when it comes to the offense. These guys are going to beef up the numbers, and they have to. Matt, they, there was too often where Maxi was caught on the wing, and he's just it, – it's not suitable for him. He's, no. he's too small to play out there. He, at the top of the box – when he can find space and wiggle in and find room like he did with his first goal against Sporting Kansas City, those are the goals that you need to score. And he, it's just beautiful team play, and that needs to be – if you could keep doing that, if you can focus on doing that once or twice a game, you are going to dominate. It's going to be so much fun to watch because goals like that are amazing. I mean, it's, it's like something out of nothing. You know, you got small buildup, you got short amount of time, and all of a sudden the ball's in the back of the net. That's right, yeah. It's uh... – Ari is saying, "Jesus, what a pass!" Uh, yeah, it was it was really it was really beautiful. We got a couple comments, dude, asking about the lineup predictions for next week, which we'll cover. Uh, we'll get to that, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely sure. get into that because that's definitely important to talk about. We've got some guys, some key players that are going to be out, so we definitely want to have a little conversation about that. Um, so so Medina played well. Um, Wallace played well. Morales played, again, like more more towards the second half. I think just a really good. Uh, team effort, dominating position, uh, dominating possession, and scoring a beautiful team goal. Which honestly, dude, if if Maxi's goal was the only goal of the game, I would have been happy. Not just because it was a win, but because of the way that that built up, and yeah. uh, and you know we we deserve to win that to win that match. Maxi also had another another look at goal. He missed it by mere inches. Where Ben Sweat plays a ball into the box. Medina again finds a little bit of space, lays it off to Maxi, who finds himself one-on-one with Bendik and winds up putting it wide. So we're, we're looking more ruthless, which is what you want. That's what you want to see from this, from this team. And dude, we've scored six goals and David Villa has only scored one of them. Listen, I, you love seeing them score, but the fact that everyone else can pull their own weight makes this team ridiculously dangerous, ridiculously dangerous. Like I, I if I'm anybody else in the league, I do not want to play us. I do not, whether we have Via or not. If we don't have Via, it's a little bit easier for for you. But if we do, you got to worry about every single person on the field. Yep. This is exactly what we talked about 
end of last season going into this season was who is gonna who is gonna make up the goals when David Villa is not scoring. That's yeah. just it's just what we're getting. I mean, again, dude, we're talking about three matches, right? Against a couple of our opponents were pretty pretty formidable opponents. Um but we're looking solid at the back. We're looking dangerous up front. Where at this point, at this point, Sean Johnson could get a goal. Um, send them up. Send them up. Send them up. Why, Why not? Why the hell not? Why not? Right. Uh, yeah. It was funny actually, dude. I don't know if you noticed. Joe Bendick wanted to go up. Uh, Orlando had a corner right before the end of the first half, and Joe Bendick wanted to go up really, really bad. I'm like, send them, please, just send them. <laughs> I'll tell you what. He played a lot of the game. Way too far out of the net. It was because David Villa wasn't, was was wasn't on the field. If David Villa was on the field, you best believe he would not be that far out. But I'll tell you what I did like. Uh, I like the fact that our defense, when the ball was in the field of play, not coming from the keeper, when the ball was in the field of play and we sent it back to start the play again from the back, the back line was very high up the field. It was not right in front of the box like it usually is. It was really much more closer to, to midfield. And I think when you can compress the field down even smaller like that and make it that much shorter, you become very, very dangerous. Now, again, you have to be careful of turnovers, which is a good thing that our but possession But, again, that's, that's really something we've got to talk about, right? Because cause Orlando didn't press us really at all. No, and they gave, they gave you the ability to play that high up. But when you do get the ability to play that high up, and your defense is that solid, you gotta take advantage of it because you shorten the field so much and it just makes it it makes everyone's <laughs> life. Short enough field already. Yeah. Um yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Um I wanna I wanna get uh to some more comments here. Ari saying agree without Via and we play like the second half, we're gonna be a big problem. Um we, we are. That's that's <laughs> that's just what Max. it is. Um uh let's see. Uh Sean Johnson, do we we gotta talk a little bit about him because he did make a ridiculous <laughs> Um, when he came out, uh, Coco was saying Sean slide out to get rid of the ball was amazing. Where uh, I forget who was running in on him, might have been Justin Merrim, perhaps. I, I really don't remember, but that where he, where he came out of the box to uh, yeah, that was that drop was, kick that ball out. Yeah, that was that was a little hold your breath right there because that was a little. <laughs> that's, listen, if he makes contact, it's a red card. But here's the thing, dude. This is this is you did not see play like this from Sean Johnson last year. No. He's evolving no. as a keeper. Yeah, right in front of us. Absolutely. Right? Match to match. He's he's improving every single time. It's just he's he's playing fantastic. There there is nobody that I would want uh in in goal other than Sean Johnson right now. Uh Steven is saying that he's better than Saunders. I mean, you you could have you could have put an empty net in there and that might have been better than Saunders but um <laughs> now nah, listen Saunders had his moments for sure for sure he, ca- he kind of carried us through that for that first season or the set yeah the first season uh he carried anyway. us and dropped us and dropped us and carried us and then dropped us and then carried us <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly um we're going to uh dude why don't we why don't we get into the due to the match conversation because you know we're coming up it's on a good one. Uh, this is going to be a good one it's going to be a difficult one i think to pick start throwing up those comments guys who is you're due to the match for NYCFC against Orlando on St. Paddy's Day. Um, while they're throwing up the due to the match, um, we just have to give a shout-out to Tommy McNamara because I think our chant brought him in. And uh, Jorge is saying shout-out to the video of the in-game uh, experience. Love the additional art. Uh, I think I think he needed to come in. He needed to come in on St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, I think it was a no-brainer. Yeah, absolute no brainer. Again, you want to see more out of him. You want to see. I think his biggest problem last season was when they put him in, they never got him the ball. Right, right. It seemed like he was just he was just a, a placeholder. He was a, a paperweight. He was just you know hanging around. You never get him the ball. A guy like that needs the ball, and you know where to get it to him. Uh, you know, top of the box, left side, and he's golden from there. So. He, for me, he had to go in, and it's unfortunate that he had to go in in that instance in yeah, that way. Right, right. He could have come on for someone else, but again, I want to see a little more playing time from him, and I want to see him do well, obviously. I want to see him in those right place, right time moments where he's getting those garbage goals in. Um, but I'm glad that he got some some playing time because he does mean a lot to this team. Uh, one of the two original guys still left. So, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's just right. Hope, that's right. Uh, 
hope they find ways to get him in and he finds ways to 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 stay stay on the uh, A team. Yeah, so dude, we got a couple of votes for Morales, a couple of uh votes for Alex Ring. Uh guys, keep throwing up those comments here cuz I don't see a lot of uh due to the match comments coming through here. We we need to know from you who you think this is going to be because Anthony and I are almost like we're complete opposites here as, <laughs> as far as who we think it's going to be. Dude, why don't yeah, why don't you get, state your case? My case, Maxi Morales. Um first half rough had a you know a little shaky, couple passes missing, but he was able to come back and play a little defense and help out. And then when it came to the second half, he was just much much better, <clears throat> much more engine like, you know, smooth moving up and down the field. He gets the goal that you know the the the, the second goal of the game where it kind of alleviates some of the pressure. He had the chance to score beforehand. Um, for me, he's just a great catalyst on this team, and when he does play well, the team plays well. It's just that his moments when he's off is a problem, but for this game, he was very much on, very good uh, for a majority of the game, and I think he, for me, he deserves it. Yeah, I see, I understand that. I, I, I get that. I really do. Um, my My vote was for Jesus Medina. Because, you know, the, the, the buildups where we had the chances and then ultimately the goal, he was involved and, you know, had it not been for him and a little bit of his vision, the chances wouldn't have necessarily come. However, I think the, the votes are, are, from what I'm looking at comment wise, is, uh, Alex Ring is, is, is kind of picking it up here. It's a toss up between, it's a toss up between Ring and Morales, but I think Ring's got a, you know, Rod Sarvis put up a, a Ring emoji. Um, so, so that counts as a vote for him. Um, Ari is saying that Morales can go high because of ring, I, I, it, which is true, which is true, right? You got to give that. Um, our team plays well because of ring. See, the uh, it's hard because who who did they give it to? They they gave it to Morales, right? I believe so. They uh, on on match day, I think they gave it to. Well, he ended up being. No, on... I think they gave it to Medina. Well, Morales ended up Morales ended up getting on Team of the Week for the MLS. That's yeah, that's that's, well, that's what it was. That might be what I'm thinking of. I think Medina might have gotten it for the for the actual game. Can you guys confirm that in the comments if you don't mind? Uh, Roddy Russell, this is this is your calling, dude. This is this one's for you. This is a softball. Um, so uh, yeah, dude, Alex Ring. We got Let's talk a little bit more about him because the dude was everywhere. I mean, he's he does what he does game in and game out, you know, but when you're looking at it from, um, I think when you're looking at it from a, a contribution perspective, he's not there on the goal side. However, no. he's there to prevent. Yeah, absolutely. His, the, the preventing is, is huge, number one, but also the fact that he can – start a play from virtually anywhere on the field because he has that presence of turnovers. He has the presence of slide tackles and getting the ball loose. He he has that presence that he brings with him everywhere where he's a rough guy. He's played relatively clean, um, which he usually does. I mean, he does accumulate yellows, but for the most part, one up on nothing, no, nothing's really rash and, and you can understand most of them. Um, but again, so much of the team can do what they do because of the fact that they have that strength on defense. And he's just like, he's the leader of the back line where he can play that far deep and he can play up and it doesn't matter where he is on the field. If you have the ball, you need to know where he is because yeah. he will find you. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. It's a tough one. It's a really, it's we got, a really we got a couple tough... of votes for Tajori. Coco is, is uh, asking for uh Tajori here, you know, the Tajori sauce, but, uh, I don't know. Steven just keeps saying dudes in blue. I, I think we should just be the dude of the match, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> Paul is saying I like rings distribution. Uh, dude, I don't know, man. In this game where offensively we weren't super hot, do you go to a guy like Alex Ring and say, you know, he held it together? You know, intercepting the ball ten times is a big deal. Making clean tackles, making clearances, I think – you know, from sometimes, dude, in games, the defense is going to win the game. Yeah, um, and it's quite possible that it could have. You know, again, they never really got anything too close. I mean, Justin Miram had a had a shot that just uh, just went wide, the bar, right? 
and then he had to want to crack the bar. So uh, I, I, aside from that, I mean, listen, do we really have to go rock, paper, scissors right now to refer Maxi and Ring? I don't know. I, I, I see a lot more comments for Alex Ring, so I think we got I think we got to go that route, dude. I think that's I'm that's fine. what it's got to be. Alex Ring for week three due to the match. Congratulations, buddy. Write it down. Whoever's so, keeping tra- whoever's keeping track of this, write it down. Lauren's keeping track, so that's she will she will write it down. That's a- that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. So um, so yeah. Uh, overall, a really good uh, a really good. I don't want to say a great win, and not I don't want to say a great game. I want to say I'm glad we got the points. The the points don't necessarily reflect the match itself. So um. You know, Roddy Russell's actually saying that he'd say Vieira. He made manager of the week, and we're three for three. Managers can take credit for that. Eh. Yeah, listen, <laughs> Lauren is saying I have a Google Doc, so she's keeping track. She's keeping track. She knows. Oh, my God. Ari's saying congrats, Ring. We got sweat. Jesus, Ring. Um. Yeah, we got – yeah, we got – yeah, Ben Sweat got the first one. Medina got the second, right? And uh, Alex Ring for today, so that's – Look at that. Jesus. Um, (laughs) I don't know why. I just threw a Bill Burr comment in there. Why does it always happen? It always happens on this, right? Who knows? Anyway, let's look ahead, dude. Uh, And while we look ahead, guys, um, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would smash that like button and let us know what you thought of this episode so far. We have got – we've got to talk about – the New England match this weekend where we've got some players that are missing. And uh, Alex Ring is one of them. Rodney Wallace is another. Potentially Via, potentially Burgett, potentially Tinnerholm. Moderita. Certainly Moderita. You want to talk about depleted squad, dude. This might be the depleted squad that we're talking about, right? So, um, wait, Tinnerholm got the second one. Sorry, Tinnerholm got the second one, the second due to the match. Right? Didn't he? I, yeah, I think so. I got a double saying, check. I thought Tinnerholm got the second one. I think he's right. Lauren, please, fact check. We need, we need you. <laughs> For the love of God, open up that Google Doc and let us know. Because, see, we already forget. That's why we need to keep track of this. So, um, so l- looking ahead to New England, New England only won one game through a last-minute goal. We got this, right? Uh, and she's saying, yes, he did. So, Anton Tinnerholm got the second due to the match. Thank you, Lauren. We appreciate that, uh, fact-checkers. This we don't is want this great. We got people running left and right doing stuff for this us. This is crazy. Make. Like, we have contributors that, that are that are, <laughs> that are are everywhere, you know? So, anyway, <laughs> dude, we got a depleted squad here. Um, if, yeah. If, if Via is still out, I would almost uh, certainly say that Tajori is going to get that that start again um if wallace is out and moderita is out who plays at left wing this is you? a good question this is a good question because if joan Burgett is available you really do want to see what he brings to the table um the fact that he'll have space to, to roam um if uh, listen, but well, he could or play. You, or you could put, yeah, okay, I got you, I got you. I got, I got you. If I got you want to play him for Via, if Via's not playing, and you want to play him there and put the jury on the wings. Again, these guys switch all the time, right. so it really, really doesn't Jonathan make a difference. Jonathan Lewis, put... perhaps. Exactly. Eric Stilato I think saying it's... Jonathan Lewis, please. Yeah. So again, we know what Lewis brings to the table, and you want to see him in the 18 for sure, absolutely, hands down. But you've got guys like McNamara, Burgett. Lewis, these guys can actually play that position fairly well, all of them. Um, I think you want to go with pace to start off, so I don't think Mac gets to start. I think if you're going to put him in, he's going to be a late sub, sure. and um, he's going to give you a little bit of relief that way. But for me, it's going to be between Joe Ingbergett and Jonathan Lewis, and I personally want to see Joe Ingbergett, um to see what he's got. I know what Lewis brings to the table, but I do want to see what Joe Ing can do because – um, the dude's got, he's just, a, he's like an, almost like an Alex ring, like player on, on offense. On offense. Yeah, exactly. Dude. Um, we've got John is saying he would have said Lewis, but the guy's gone full mix. Um, yeesh. yeah, without, without <laughs> playing, without playing, which is scary because yeah. it's mixes play on the field kind of took him out of it. Jonathan Lewis, I don't know what's going on, and we we haven't been able to get the training and see what goes on. So yeah, uh, listen, all these guys look like they train hard. They all look like they train hard. 
is it a matchup thing? Is it a experience thing? Sure. I, I'm I'm not sure what it is, but I know what Lewis can do. And honestly, I'm okay with Lewis being a sub most of the time because fresh legs at the end of games is very dangerous. Well, he's proved he's proved to be dangerous in that in that kind of exactly, spot. Exactly, exactly. So for me, I kind of want to see. I don't kind of want to see. I want to see Joe Ingbergett play. Yeah, I would so too, as long as he's, he's healthy. Available. Um, Christian is yeah. saying that as long as our back four is intact, along with Maxi and Medina, we'll be okay. Lewis should play against the Revs. Yeah, everybody's for Lewis. Uh, listen, either way, I, I'm good. I just want to see, regardless of who gets to play up in the front, I want to see charge being taken. I want to see leadership from the front, as well as the leadership on defense. I want to see an offensive leadership role player. Yeah. And I want to see everybody succeed at whatever they're doing. If, if your role is on the wing, and I want you to play that position as best as you can. And I want to see what we can get out of it. Because when it comes down to these games in August and September, and guys are hurt or guys need a break or guys are off playing here and there, you really need to know what you have to work with. And these minutes are super valuable sure. for guys who are borderline. If you're on the fence, this is your chance to make something of yourself and put yourself into the conversation every single week. So whoever gets called needs to step up. Uh, in my, I mean, it's just it's it's not my opinion; it's fact. No, it's just a fact. Um, Eric is saying that Via made it sound like he will be available, but who knows? And we thought he was available until 15 minutes before kickoff. It felt like, right? You know, so yeah. As I long think as the bigger skilled. question, dude, we, we have scoring threats. We obviously have scoring threats. So on offense, I'm almost not so much concerned. I'm more concerned about the 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 who starts for ring question, which uh, Daniel's posing. Is it a forey? Do we see Ebenezer? I just like saying that name. I don't know why. I just like saying Ebenezer. <laughs> um, yeah, who is it? That's that's going to be the question. That's going to be the big question mark. Do you start James Sands? Uh, we have some people asking. Um, you know, Paul is saying a forty for ring. Uh, I know John John Levin wanted to know earlier in the day. He posed the question: Was it uh, Sands that's, or dude, he, a, a forty? I literally just put John's comment there up right go. now. I can't. Even, Thoughts I on can't playing Sands. It's like it. connected, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I again. It's – we've seen a four play already this season. Um, not great, but not terrible. Uh, limited minutes. As so good as he could do with the minutes he had. Yeah, exactly. So for me, he's got a little more height than Sands, and I think he can do more a little bit with uh, aerial balls. So for me, I would personally go a four. I'm not against seeing Sands. But again, I think Sands is so young, and he has so many years to grow into this spot that you don't necessarily have to throw him out there because he's not going to be a consistent player throughout the season. He's not going to be there. Right. You know, he's not going to be your 60 minute guy every game. Right. He's going to be a nice luxury to have, you know, here and there when you need him. But for me, I would rather see a at this point in time, just because look, we're on a roll and you want to keep it going. You don't want to experiment too, too much, but you do want to, you have your group of guys where, you know, these guys are going to be your backup guys you got to get them in to see what they can do because if they can't handle it, then guys like James Sands, uh, you know, can come in and play. You might see Kwame Wu out play uh, just because he's gotten minutes. True. This yeah, season. that's true. That's true. I don't know if he's. Yeah, I don't know if he's that defensive minded. I feel like he's. I, I feel like he's more of like a like for like young hell kind of swap. You know, like that's just me. based on what I've less, seen so far. But he could be. I think Jan Hel plays a little bit more aggressive. I think he's a little bit more aggressive on both sides of the ball. And I think that leads Jan Hel to do a lot of great things. He also does a lot of bad things. And he's <laughs> never really in the middle. I feel like Kwame would probably be more in the middle, a little bit more cautious, a little bit more uh, textbook type player, which is not terrible. Sure. Um, it's good to have those guys on the team yeah. when you need uh, something solid. But again, um, we haven't seen enough of him probably really too much, yeah. but he's thought highly enough to, to stay on the team from last year. So I think, I think, you know, ha having these conversations is not a bad problem to have, you know, like the, the no. fact that we now have options here, I think is, I think is good. What these guys do when they actually get the minutes is really what we're, what we're looking after. Right. So, you know, you look at a guy like Saad uh, Abdul Salam, who 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 stepped right into Tanner Holmes' shoes, and I thought had a pretty good game. So, like, yeah. that's a position like at right back, where you know last year it was R.J. Allen or Ethan White. I feel a lot Revolving more, I feel a lot more secure 
knowing that our fullbacks can get forward and back. So um, I think that position for me is pretty much locked up. That's just like for like if Tinnerholm is out. I mean, I want to see Tinnerholm back because I thought he had a great game against L.A. and uh, a pretty good game against Sporting. So I want to see him back for sure. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the midfield is going to be interesting if, if, if between Medina, Morales, Herrera, and whoever our other two forwards are, I think we're going to get enough scoring, especially if you guys get, if you got guys like Ben Sweat and Salam, uh, pushing up, up the wings. I don't think scoring is going to be the issue. I think the real issue is going to be, are we going to miss those 10 interceptions, those four clearances, those extra tackles that Alex Ring brings. I think if anybody's going to affect the outcome of this match by not being there, it's Alex Ring. Yeah, I, w- I would say so too. I think his presence, if if the scoreline shows to be in favor of New England, I think you're going to look back and say, yeah, Alex Ring wasn't there, so it was a much different game defensively. Yeah, and uh, somebody had commented uh, early on, you know, New England's like a like an iffy team for us. I'd have to go back and check their record against them, but like a thorn in the side, like not yeah, always. Yeah, kind of like Orlando used to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they're they're still, you know, they're still they still give it to us every time we go up there. So it's listen. None of these games are easy. None of these are no. are pushovers. You no, cannot we know. take we know any game lightly. You know, we we know how it is. So it's just you, you got to keep sticking with the plan. Doing what works and keep rolling it and keep working hard, and the results will, will will keep coming in. No, that's it, that's it. But overall, dude, a really a really really good start to the season for NYCFC in first place, uh, kind of dominating the East right now. And um, dude, nine points out of nine points. That's 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 a that's a great start for this team. Uh, it's pretty much the most consistent start that we've really seen from this from this squad. So you really, you know, our goal differential is beautiful. I like to keep that rolling. Dude, two clean sheets for Sean Johnson. Uh, it's just, but you, but you can't take any game for granted. And that's what, you know, that's what Steven is saying. So you can't look at a team like new England who may be struggling or because again, you know, you, you look at what happened when we played against DC United last year, you look at what happened when we played against um, RSL, you know, like things, things happen. So, um, yeah. I don't want to get into into goal predictions here because it's it's you know, we usually suck at that, but yeah. uh, but you hope for them to bring back the three points and that's that's sure. really all you can ask for them, right? Yeah, I just hope whoever's you know whoever coming off of injury that's playing, um, just hope they get healthy and we can see him out there. Yeah, so Ari is saying more of the reason why Ring is the dude of the match. We're more concerned about missing him next game, so that's a good point. Thanks, Fair Ari, point. for that. Uh, Roddy Russell coming in strong with the stats here, dude. Uh, New England head to head, three wins, two draws, four losses. So they pretty much have our number by a slim margin, but they still have our number. So um, away, to give us a problem. away, we're one win, no draws, and three losses. So we have a tough time playing at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, yeah, for some strange reason. And then, and then you know, now with with our lineup being kind of uh, dismantled with potential injuries and international call-ups it's just geez this is going to be an interesting game this will be a good test to really yes. see the depth i thought i thought saturday against orlando was going to be a really good depth test this will be an even bigger one yes if absolutely. a lot of if a lot of what we think is going to happen happens yeah a good measuring stick for the depth absolutely i agree 100 percent. you know so guys um you know right before we wrap up the show make sure to s- smash that like button again for us and, and share this video with your friends we really do appreciate it when you do and if you don't already give us the uh the follow on facebook instagram and twitter we're at dudes and blue it's really easy to get a hold of us and again the reviews are always helpful on facebook and especially itunes uh if you guys listen to us on itunes please leave us the review it helps it helps other people like you find us and uh, it's it's really important, but we really appreciate you guys tuning into this episode uh, week in week out. This is so much fun for us, and um, you know we really do love it. So, uh, dude, uh, you know, around the league we got some some other craziness going on, but uh, the the bottom line is that NYCFC is in first place. Hopefully, they they hold on to that this weekend. Any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? No, not not really. I think everything is uh, everything is going going well. Uh, you know, the preseason turned out to be, uh, I guess, Vieira finding out what everybody can do in what places. It was and a sham. It, it turns out it was. Look it was that. a facade. <laughs> 
I'm just glad to see this team back and playing well and and eliminating some of the mistakes that were made towards the end of last season where we saw it week in and week out, the adjustments weren't made. And you can see clearly adjustments are being made because of the personnel that's being put on the field. And from half to half, I mean, you're seeing it. You saw it clearly in uh, with the Orlando game. The first half and second half were completely two different games being played. Which you, so, you know, dude, that's a good point. That's a really, really good point because we didn't see that last year. We saw him do a lot. pretty we good job. He, we saw him do a pretty good job uh, managing game to game, but not so much half to half. When they were winning games half to half, he was doing it well. It was when he couldn't make the adjustment from half to half. That was when the problems arose. Yeah. And then, again, he could do it game to game, but you really need to you, – you have to be able to do it almost, you know, in blocks of minutes when you're playing because if you're playing – I would say 15 minutes at a time, you can really judge sure. what's going on. Um, that's why you get those those 15 minutes of offense, those 15 minutes of – Shut down defense. It, that's the way it goes. So yeah. if you can adjust and continue to adjust, as long as the players perform the way they're supposed to, it makes the coach's job a little bit easier. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, dude, la- uh, last thing here. Paul is asking about attendance. It dropped by 8,000. St. Patrick's Day. I-, I-, I got nothing else. I mean, it's it's a win- another winter game on St. Patrick's Day in the city. Most of the city was shut down because of the parade. That's, uh, you know, how do you go from yeah. 26 to, eight, to 18? I mean, uh, week to week. Yeah, it's a it's a drop, and again, you're you're looking at it, it's we're still like second or third in the league in average attendance. We definitely beat we this this match, which kind of sucked attendance wise. Still, I think beat the Red Bulls home opener, so we're doing just yeah. fine. That's always good. That's always good. Listen, it's always going to happen when you haven't won a championship. You're still very very new. You're competing with other sports teams that are that are playing. Um, and, and again, there's no, there's no news, uh, coverage. There's hardly any news coverage right here, uh, baby, right here. Uh, yeah. You're honestly, <laughs> it's not, not, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad in a way because the only way you guys can really get news is going online and searching fairly difficultly because difficultly, is that even that, a word? Dude, that's not even a word. I just make them up as I go. It's Dip. fine. Call <laughs> Webster. We'll put it in there. It, you That's really good, have though, to, difficultly. You really have to go and apply yourself to search for it um, or follow guys like us, yeah. the MICFC Nation podcast, uh, Blue City. We're we're pretty much the 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 vehicle the to lines, get this man. stuff out. You know what I mean? So, And we're not national. We're not all over the city. I mean, we, you guys are from everywhere, which is amazing. But, again, it, there's only so much that we can do with our resources. So – um, more media coverage would be fantastic from the from the bigger names, the bigger papers, um, the news networks. I mean, listen, NBC can play Premier League. There's no reason why NBC nightly news shouldn't be able to show the scores of uh, of of their their hometown soccer team. So, yeah, no, for sure. um, and again, you're, you don't have players. You don't have the players that uh, that brought in the names at first. Uh, make no mistake about it. Lampard, Pirlo, and Villa are the reason why this team had so many fans in the first two, three seasons. Um, now that only one of those guys is remaining, a lot of the people who just came to see Pirlo are are gone because that that's really the only reason why they wanted to come. Not Again, not really fans, I would say. More fans of the sport and liking to see, you know, <laughs> what's going on. But you get a lot of us that are, pa- that are passionate about it that really need – um, we need more of us is what it comes down to. Yeah, no, for sure. Dude, uh, <laughs> Daniel is asking, how do I get a dudes in blue shirt? Like the one behind Antonino? Oh, you like the, uh, the dudes in blue <laughs> super jersey here. You want to do something even better? I'll show you something even better right here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you stole uh, Angelino's number, dude. You stole Angelino's number. That's right, I did. Um, he was fun to watch when he played, right? Yeah, he was. He was alright. Somebody actually in the in the thread uh, for this episode asked about him, but dude, we are we are uh, getting to the <laughs> to the end of this. We're at the end. Uh, somebody did ask us about stickers and merch, but uh, but stickers and merch. Listen, stick- if if there's enough interest, we can try to figure something out. As of right stickers now, there's might be cool stickers in the works. Cool. Right, but um, we, we can know definitely- Coco likes her dudes in blue shirt. That's for sure. Yeah, so we could definitely figure something out if there's enough warrant for it. But again, um, it's it's more of what you guys want. So if you want it and you have any ideas, let us know and maybe we can figure something out. 
that's that's it for sure. Well, guys, one more time, smash that like button. Give us a follow, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Dudes in Blue. We hope you guys enjoyed episode number 94. Thank you guys so much for listening, for watching, for engaging, and uh, hope we bring home three points from New England this Saturday. And we will be here next Monday night, same time, same place, Facebook Live, 8 p.m. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, stay blue.